watch things every once in a while. Um, so I think we've taken care of the announcements. Uh, but I do want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, officially, and welcome you to our service of worship. And I want you to, would like you to turn in your hymn notes to page number 750 in the back, uh, as we will do our call to worship uh, with using this song. We used part of it a couple of weeks ago, that's the call to worship, but I think it's, uh, it's good every once in a while to read the whole thing. So, um, so I, I will read the, the parts in the uh, regular print and he will respond in the bowl. So, the habits of telling the glory of God and the food that <clears throat> proclaims God's handiwork. Day is a for speech and night to night, where is God? There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet the question was have the world here, and the world is the end of the world. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and runs its course with joy, like a strong man. It is rise from the end of the and the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The death of the body of the Lord is sure, making one The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and the The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The Lord More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, dripping the Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can escape one's own also keep your servants from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, and your Amen. And I would ask you, while you have goes there, turn to 591, as we sing verses 1 and 2 of Rescue the Perishing.
join together in our congregational prayer as it is printed there, saying together, O Lord our God, Father of Jesus Christ, we come to you and for you are always your grace is always available, and your help is just a prayer away. May the task of continuing the of your care and swift praise when you answer us. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Now we continue in a spirit of prayer, and I must retreat to my full pulpit for a I thought I was well prepared this morning. However, uh, so uh, we have a very long list that. Uh, Administrative assistant keeps up to date thanks to all of those who have lifted up prayers and um, continue to um, keep them in, in our mind. And, and this list indeed does that. But sometimes she's not here when prayer are. Um, Needed. Okay. Another implement I can't shut off during the service. However, if there are any other new concerns, uh, I would ask that you raise them this morning. You have a rejoice. You have a rejoice. A joy. A joy. A joy. <laughs> well, we can rejoice in joy. You might pray for Mike, our neighbor, who yeah. lost the leg. Uh, but mm -hmm. He's coming home when to hell. I just been gone months. <coughs> yeah. yeah, praise God. That, uh, Mike, our neighbor across the hall will be returning after quite a time. Huh? After quite a time, for sure. But healing uh, takes place in many ways. Prosthesis is a, a way to, to help us get around in times when uh, our bodies fail us in ways. You have a joy. I'm glad to see Carol back. And she's feeling better. Yes, we, we welcome back um, Sandy and Captain. Um, and also, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the one on the other. Oh. Uh, anyway, it's good to see. Um, you back in church with us. Uh, are there others? Yes, Brian. Back. <laughs> yeah, well, Cheryl mm -hmm. returns. Brian. I'm lift up. Uh, his name is Don. I'm Sarah Jane's mom's husband who went home with hospice early in the week. Don, who is on hospice. Okay. We will find a place for him on our list. Okay. Are there others? I do want to note that um, Tom McGovern Jr. Uh, and 
his wife, Brenda, had been added to our list this week. You'll notice that under Cindy's prayer list requests. Uh, he has come under the care of doctors for some growths in his chest. Um, and they're presently diagnosing and, and finding a treatment for, for that condition. Um, Tom Sr. said that uh, his son had a pretty good feeling after talking with the doctors. still need to keep him in prayer for treatments and whatever else for for a healing. Speak up. Did I see a hand over here somewhere? Yeah. Okay. So um Seeing no others, then let us return and continue in a spirit. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we do indeed thank you for being present with us this morning. We thank you that your Holy Spirit and enlightens uh, <laughs> hearts and brings to mind those things that need to be. And we ask that uh, you would make us aware indeed of, of your presence, of the presence of the Holy Spirit, and move us through this time of prayer. We know, Lord, that there may be a lot of names here, but you know every one and then some. We thank you for answers to prayer. We thank you for Mike's return home next week. We thank you for Cheryl's return to us this morning. We pray for Don as he is um, facing hospice and uh, end care. So we ask for comfort for him and for the family. We ask for uh, your presence with Patty, Di Tlemy, for your presence with Tom, for the, um, for the answers to prayers for Sandra, and for all of those that are on our list, your presence and your meeting of all of those needs. We thank you uh, especially uh, once more for uh, for Lori and Jeff's daughter and her new deeds. We thank you that you come through oftentimes at the last minute with answers. And we lift up Jack and Conti as well to you and Ray Fellows and Nessie with him as well. But, uh, you calm their hearts as they prepare for their wedding. We ask for your presence with that event and all that surrounds it. And we thank you for the voices of the choir that will grace our space this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Indeed, the one that taught his disciples to pray and we pray with them as we say, our Father, Lord, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
Let the Lord our Son be Lord. The the kingdom and the power and the glory started our first week of our new season and um, I didn't get a chance at that time to uh, do what I wanted uh, just through the constraints of time but I'd like to take just a minute to uh, let you know just a couple examples of the dedication that you have of the people that are in this choir uh, starting with uh, Cheryl Cleaver. Cheryl, you want to tell us how many years you've been singing in the choir? A lot. Uh, <laughs> probably 47. Yeah, almost, almost 50 years. And uh, the other, I mean, I certainly appreciate every single voice that is here uh, and the time that they put in on Thursdays uh, and that kind of thing. But I also want you to know somebody that's doing a lot of travel. Brian is retired, as, as everybody knows, and he is going to be uh, eventually living in Maine, uh, up in a town called town called Lincolnville. Lincolnville, which, if you know where that is, that's way up there, good four over four hours to get back and forth. And Brian is making that trek to. Uh, be with choir and to be here on Sunday, uh, even though uh, his wife is already up there and working. So uh, it's a dedication that is much appreciated all around, as is everybody else here. But uh, a couple of examples of just how much has been value of the choir. So, thank you, choir, and uh, we're up for a brand new season, and we'll sing away. He'll take a step forward so that no man can do a solo.
Scripture's reading this morning is from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. And this can be found on page 230 in your walls. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bride. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. May we hear in these words the word of the Lord. And our gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. This can be found on page 43 of the New Testament. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say I am? They answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah, and he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great <coughs> suffering, and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in his glory, in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. May we hear in these words. Gospel of the Lord. 
our next hymn is Stand Up and Bless the Lord. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5. And it's found on page 662 in your hymn. As if you didn't anticipate that already. <laughs> so my sermon this morning is entitled, No One Can Tame the Tongue. Let me start with a confession. I have so much trouble with my tongue. I can so identify with James' characterization of that little member and its ability to bless God one minute and turn around the next and curse one made in God's image. I'm not really so good at that taming thing. And I'm sure that my wife would be more than happy to witness that I have that difficulty. <laughs> I have some tolerance for people and their treatment of one another and even of me. But uh, little tolerance for things that don't follow what I perceive to be the correct order or that fall from my hands when they should be staying there, things like that. And it comes on me suddenly, and out of nowhere, it seems, flashes of temper expressed in a loud and irritated voice, following a long period of quiet calmness and a feeling of peace. I don't understand myself sometimes. Like Paul's admission of doing things he doesn't want to do, but does anyway because of the sin that lives within him. And that confession of Paul's you can find in the seventh chapter of Romans, verses 15 through 24. Oh, that I had more self-control than Paul. But I don't see that happening. But I think I agree with James that the tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. There's nothing like a malfunctioning computer program to bring out the best in my evil tongue. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> At least You're not alone. <laughs> At least for me. After spending a half hour typing something only to have it disappear and be unable to recover it by any means I know or can discover, it is so frustrating that it's illustrated by the words of iniquity I didn't even know 
existed within him. <laughs> so if you're around when I'm typing, please beware. As he says further, James says further, but no one can tame the tongue. A restless evil, full of deadly poison. It seems in this passage that James is really directing his thoughts toward a tongue that aims to destroy relationships. The church to which James is speaking is challenged by its position in the world, which at the time was under Roman authority, a sometimes cruel and fickle entity identified by what by what we might call the my way or the highway kind of government. That there was an expected order under Roman rule. And as long as you didn't interfere or subvert it, you might be able to live somewhat in peace. The Romans were tolerant to some extent of the religions of the places under their control as long as the participants there were willing to submit to their supreme leader, the Romans, Caesar, and acknowledge him as a god. For that is what the Caesars demanded and how they thought of themselves. And by the time of the writing of this book of James, the church was pulling away from the established um, and comfortable relationship with the Jewish practice of religion and being established as a more independent and more challenging of the government of Rome. Christ was their God and the focus of their worship and Rome was, uh, could no longer control them as they thought they should. And their rejection of Caesar and embrace of Christ was a problem for them in terms of their ability to live peaceably with all, inviting unwanted attention from their overseers. <clears throat> James, though, emphasizes the power of the tongue, identifying it as a small member of the body equivalent to the bits of uh, horses and the rudders of ships, small parts of the reins of the animals and uh, of the hardware of the vessels that guide the whole being or assembly at the direction of outside influences. The bits of horses are manipulated by the rider to influence the horse to go where the rider wants to go. And the pilot of a ship steers the rudder to point the ship in the direction he wants it to go. So who controls the tongue if it is set on fire by hell, as James says? Is there any kind of invited control of any use to the speaker? Sometimes I wonder what the source is of those impetuous outbursts of mine that serve no good purpose, indeed may serve just the opposite. I sense that James has answered that question for me. Now I use my tongue for good as well, to teach and help others to know God. I use it every Sunday here to preach and to teach to teach about scripture and what that says about your relationship with God and each other. I worry that my sometimes lack of control of my tongue may be tainting that message or even negating the message altogether with one tiny moment of a lack of self-control or even negating the message. Please, pray for me. I need it. For James gives warning to those who have a similar call to mine. He says, not many of you should become teachers. 
For you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. I feel that sense of judgment frequently and that need for self-control, especially of that tongue. Maybe I could just resort to a simple scream without words in those moments. At least it wouldn't bring judgment. Maybe. But um, when I think back on my life, I, I think I learned that response, that language of response from my father. Not to put him down or anything like that. But well, he, he was really a car guy. He loved his cars. And um, when, when he was working on them and fixing a problem that it didn't get fixed, or the hands fell off the tool and knuckles scraped on the engine, he would often let out a word or two of uh, cussing. And perhaps that stemmed from his service in the military, I don't know. Because I didn't hear that kind of language in his parents' house. And I didn't even hear that language regularly in my own house. Uh, but despite those occasional language lapses, he was a man who believed in God and lived as such. His usual language around the house was not full of those words, and his care for his wife and his children was obvious. So I'm sorry, Dad, for picking up improper language in times of stress. And God... Forgive me for carrying it on to this very time. Help me to control that tongue of mine and direct me to other expressions in those times of frustration. I think God is the only one that can do it for me. Now James concludes this portion of his letter with the dichotomy of living as people of God with, at the same time, outbursts of the tongue incompatible with it. As he says it, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives? or a grapevine figs. No more can salt water yield fresh. There is a certain order in this universe established by our Heavenly Father. Things in this world were established to be consistent and orderly. <laughs> fig trees were created to bear figs. Grape vines created to bear grapes. Apple trees to bear apples. And on and on and on. You know, all the different species and those kinds of things. Now, there, there may be times when a certain variety of apple may be grafted onto a tree bearing mostly of other kind and still survive. Uh, but generally, not a grafting of one kind of tree to another, like a pine to an oak, or one type of growth to another, such as a tree and a vine. Now, the spring yielding two types of water still holds true today. But through the process of desalinization, there may be an ability to convert salt water to fresh from a spring only yielding salt water, if there is such a thing, uh -oh. percolating through the ground, maybe take all the salt out anyway. But, but the point being made here by James is that inconsistency of speech diminishes the effect of that which builds up by the moments of that which is spoken to destroy. 
You cannot take back what has escaped from your mouth by your tongue. You can only ask forgiveness from one who is hurt by your destructive words and hope for mercy. And as Christian brothers and sisters, we should always be prepared to both seek that mercy and offer it freely. For we know how hard it is to control that tongue. Indeed. And now we come to our time of offering. I would invite uh, Lori and Gail to come forward to share some music during the collection. We thank you for these offerings that have been brought forth. We thank you for hearts willing to give. And we thank you for wisdom to distribute. We thank you and praise you always. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Now I would invite you to turn to hymn number 89. As we sing verses 1 and 3 of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.